Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox and welcome to my very first tutorial. Hopefully I make sense. Hopefully you can follow along and hopefully you take something along with you. I feel like repeat patterns are really useful, especially if you want to make cool backgrounds for your desktop, for your phones, for clothing. They've got plenty of uses and I don't know, I think it's a quick skill that everyone should know. So I was researching and I saw that there were quite a few basic repeat pattern tutorials already on YouTube, but I didn't see many that were more focused on the minimal negative space side. So I wanted to for myself, I wanted to explore that and I had never done anything like that before, so I also wanted to record the process and share along with you guys and share my tips. Just a disclaimer, only about two minutes of this would be technically the repeat pattern side and then the other half or the rest of the video will be me creating a lot of the artwork that I fill in between all the spaces. So hopefully you learn something and yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Alrighty, so what you will need to create this textiles print or repeat print is Photoshop, basic Photoshop skills and some artwork. You'll also need to use the pen tool or whatever selection tool that you like to use. I prefer the pen tool because it's a lot cleaner. I know it's really laborious, but I really like the fresh, clean cut look that the pen tool gives and I just much prefer having a lot more control over it. I just feel like it's a lot more accurate. I know there's much better, quicker ways to select. So yeah, really, it's just up to you. So what you're doing here is creating a block. A block is what they call in the textiles industry, basically the artwork that is going to tessellate around and repeat the print seamlessly. So you'll understand what that means in a little bit once I demonstrate a bit further. So I'm just going to speed up the video and cut everything out really, really fast and, and be envious of how fast paced this is. It's so satisfying watching things in fast motion just because, yeah, it, it makes you feel like you're being really, really productive. Like, wow, look at me go. Another reason why I'm cutting this out is because it's quite colourful, the print, I mean it's super colourful, so I wanted a flat common element throughout the whole print and I wasn't sure at this point what colour I wanted but um, I knew I needed some sort of flat colour in there just to really subtly pull it in together. All the cutouts as well will make it easier for you to tuck elements in and out um, and make characters kind of pop in and out over shoulders and then you can duplicate a shoulder. You'll know what I mean in a second once I go through it. So once you've cut out your block or maybe you already have a block and that's how you started your artwork, you're going to go to command option C or image and down to canvas size and then change the border around it to about five centimeters. I've chosen five centimeters because the characters look about that size to me. And then you're going to go into command option I for image and get the measurements um, of the pixel size or centimeter or millimeter size and write that down. Once you've done that, you can go into, in the menu bar, go to filter, other, offset and then it'll come up with this window and type in your new halved measurement with a minus in front of it. So what that'll do is split your block in half and then split it again in another half. And what you'll have is this gap in the middle. And now once that block has been split, it will now tessellate perfectly once everything's been filled in between. So the filling in between is what we're going to do today. That part's a little bit complicated, but hopefully you'll understand like how I cut everything out and how I weaved everything together by the end of this. So what I've done here, I'm 
cutting out a artwork that I had already done with acrylic on paper. I chose to use this artwork again because it's similar to the other medium that I used the original block for and it's the same with the blue character as well. So I knew I already had those characters and I just wanted to pop those in because the textures matched and the colors matched as well. So I just knew that I needed to put those girls in. So you can see here I'm just copying and pasting the pink character and the gimp character over the elephant. Elephant. I didn't want the new elements to hide the old ones too much so you'll be seeing me copying and pasting a lot of characters to be woven on top of one another. I'm sure there's a better way to do this but I've just copied and pasted elements that have been sticking out of the block area or the repeating pattern area and use rulers to match them up. So if I find a better solution I may do a updated version of this tutorial. You can also see here that I've just experimented with another older artwork to see if it would fit and I felt like uh, I didn't want too many animals in it so I decided against it. Here I'm just testing and looking at the pattern to see how it fits. I'm just going to jump in quickly here into the future, show you how to select your pattern so you can check it as you go. First you want to select all, then you go into edit, define, so then you name your pattern. You can command D after that to deselect everything. Okay and then what you want to do now is create a new layer. Go to your bucket tool and fill it up, it doesn't matter what color it is. Double click on your layer and then you click on pattern overlay and it'll come up with a whole library of other patterns. Here you can see a bunch of other older patterns that I've already made. And then you click on that selection and you can scale it and then you can zoom in and see what your pattern looks like zoomed up and what it looks like all tessellated. So that's how you can check your pattern as you go. All right, let's get back into it. Now I've run out of a couple of characters to pop in here. So I'm literally going back to the drawing board and creating new ones and also filling in the characters that have been cropped on the top. So let's get into that. So I photographed all of the filled in characters and I typically prefer to photograph it just because my camera is a little bit better than my scanner and in the end I just photoshop all the faults out of it anyway. I've patched that up with I think the content aware tool and then the stamping tool just to get rid of that seam. I also airbrush into it a little bit as well and um, here I'm just color correcting it but then I realized that the tip of the feather wasn't placed in so I went back and fixed that up. So you can see there it's a little bit blurry uh, on the ears and on the eye but I do fill that in with airbrush and I'm not too fussy about it because in the end if you just zoom out you don't notice too much unless you know you're really looking and also in the grand scheme of the whole pattern you really don't notice all those little faults especially once it gets printed uh, all of that sort of stuff kind of blurs and fills in so yeah you can be as pedantic as you want but I'm not too fussed about it so I also decided to give the red girl a facelift I didn't love her face beforehand and when I was creating the original piece it was really rushed because I was on a fairly tight deadline. 
Yeah, I just much prefer her face now. I think it's a lot more detailed and it fits with the rest of the crowd a lot more. So with my work process, I normally go bit by bit and then reassess. So I repainted some of the faces, popped them in, and then that's when I saw what colors needed to be added in and I decided on an orange character. So let's get into that one. So you can see here there aren't that many yellow and orange characters in there so it kind of balances out the colors as much as possible. Uh, and with this last character I created it in Procreate with the iPad Pro. I've got a video about that one uh, if you wanted to hear my thoughts on that. I also felt that she did suit the rest of the characters. Uh, I was teetering on whether or not I wanted to color her in, but in the end it felt like it kind of broke up the rest of the characters, uh, which, I don't know, for me felt like a good thing. Yeah, made it. Okay, so hopefully you found that, yeah, somewhat interesting. I feel like I learned quite a bit and it was really exciting making a really intense textiles print. Like, really, this is colorful AF. So just to let you know, I did make some merch with this textiles print. I made leggings and then I also have tote bags. The tote bags sold out really quickly. So I've ordered a couple more and they are on pre-order at the moment and I am expecting them to come in January. So head over to my website or just, you know, have a look at all the stuff that I've got over there. It's a pretty beautiful website, I have to say. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I don't know what these hand movements are. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you later. Uh, bye!